this. Now, though, it's time to discuss today's headlines. Camilla and Giles are here. Welcome, you two. Hi. Welcome, welcome. It's exciting to be here. Go I'm, on. I'm celebrating Wednesday Just... of this week, the 5th of July, will be the 75th anniversary of the National oh. Health Service. Oh. So I thought I would put on a jumper to celebrate. Absolutely. But of course, in 75 years, a lot has changed. A lot has yes. changed. Do you know there were under 50 million people living in the United Kingdom? When it back, first started. Yes. And now mm. there are something like 68 million. Yeah. So think of that. What I, I like about that jumper, as I said to you earlier, it's slimming. <laughs> which is kind of ironic for an NHS jumper. Yeah. It's in quite that, <laughs> You might come to the NHS because you weren't slim. And this actually is... You've never looked slimmer than today, yeah. Jarzy. The reason is it's a little bit small for me. Right. Uh, and I have been holding my tummy in yes. since I met you at 7am. <laughs> but you're also looking quite cool because you have turned up the bottom of your jeans, I noticed. What? Oh, no. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, oh, hello. What is happening here? Now, are you well, doing that because you've shrunk as well? Yes, with your trainers on. Me. Well, the reason I'm doing it, to be honest with you, <laughs> you is my... Cool. My last lot of jeans, I found the edges were frayed oh. at the bottom. So I thought I'll turn them up. Maybe that's the way to do it. Or you just get shorter jeans. And, and what look... do you think of the shoes? I like I the think you look They're very kind of like cool. I'm trying to... yeah. That's yeah. like grey denim effect. Thank you. Damn. I like, yeah. Yeah. I like everything distracted. that's happening here. You know, here. I've reached the age. Should he do his own fashion thing? I think you should do your own. Yeah. You had a, a fashion should. brand, um, the whole lot. I think there's a change I've seen you. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. You will know you're getting old, Craig, when people start saying you're looking dapper. Looking that's dapper. what they always say. You're looking dapper. That's the clue. Our, isn't um, it great you're still with us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, you're still you here. Know, oh, you're still, are you oh, still on telly? Oh, I read something. Uh, I'm actually oh. an avatar. <laughs> is, I'm not a real person at My all. God. Now, before we descend into complete and utter chaos, oh, yes. which I feel we already might have done, um, we are beginning by talking about the NHS. Yes, actually, that's so right. This is rather fitting for your jumper today. The British Medical Association is holding a five-day walkout uh, on all junior doctors in England starting on the 13th of July next week and ending on the 18th of July. And what they're looking for, Camilla, here is full pay restoration. So that's a 35% pay yes. rise uh, to make up for what they estimate is to be a 26% pay cut in real terms since 2008. I mean, 35% is punchy, right? I mean, yeah. we can understand lots of people on the front line saying we've got below inflation pay rises for a decade and therefore we're out of pocket as a result. But even asking for an inflation-linked pay rise is going to be looking at 9% at the moment. It's almost 9% inflation. Then the argument from the government will be, well, it might be down to 5% by the end of the year, so why would we give you 9 And this, I think the public, people watching this, are in a bit of a dilemma because they very much value the work of doctors and nurses, mm. but they're also aware that the NHS has had an absolute <coughs> kicking post-COVID. Uh, waiting lists are at 7.4 million. That target to treat people within 18 weeks you should be treating 92% of people within 18 weeks and currently the NHS is only treating 58% mm. within 18 mm. weeks. And by the way, I mean, we cast around these times, 18 months, 18 weeks. If you've got a serious con condition yeah. like cancer mm. and you're having to wait to be seen for any weeks, it's hugely anxiety-inducing. So I think... People are in two minds because they appreciate the work that these people are doing. They might be at home not having had pay rises themselves, waiting for treatment and thinking, this isn't the time to go off for five days. That's the longest stretch that junior doctors have ever taken on strike. OK. It's, it's a problem, isn't it, when the government announced they want to expand the health service, get more people involved, they want to invest in that side of it, and then you have to counter it with the current crop wanting more money. And where, where does the money come from? The government's plan, which is, I think, approved of by the opposition as well, is about long-term growth, increasing the number of doctors and nurses over 10, 20 years. The problem is now 1.3 million people a day, though, are seen by the NHS. It's a huge, extraordinary organisation, and it delivers mostly excellent service. Mm -hmm. The problem here... I see, is there doesn't seem to be enough talking going on. Mm. And that's really, I think, what most people... People are less sympathetic towards the consultants because they see that, apparently, their average return for them is around 100000 a And they did get a 4.5% pay rise in the last financial And they have had. So they're less sympathetic also, there. Also, the pensions are more generous in the NHS mm. than they might be in the private sector. Um, but... But there's a feeling about the nurses, very much so, and about the junior doctors as well. All one wants to see is them actually trying to come... It will be settled eventually. There will be a compromise. And it would be nice if it was sooner rather than later. Really for anybody plan. that's got a, a family member or they themselves yeah. are unwell yeah. at the moment, you wake up and you hear this news. It must be so... But you know when scary. that workforce plan was announced last week... The first question I was asking myself is, why have you only just done this? Yeah. 
I mean, why wasn't it done a decade ago, a workforce plan? Mm. It doesn't take a genius to work out that as the population grows, you talk about mm -hmm. it being 50 million back mm -hmm. in 1945, actually the population has risen by 9 million people since 1997. Mm -hmm. How are all those people going to be accommodated into a system if there isn't enough staff and indeed enough appointments? Mm -hmm. That's like, we've known that for a decade. And thanks, to Brexit, to, you can't, uh, 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 thanks to Brexit, you have to educate everyone. You can't just bring them in from overseas, so it's a right old pickle, isn't it? Uh, it you is. Know. But will we be bringing them in from France? Well, wow. that leads us on quite nicely to our next story. So this was the sixth night of rioting across the country uh, following the death of Nahel uh, Merzark. This is a 17-year-old boy who was shot and killed by a French police officer during a traffic stop following a car chase in Paris on Tuesday last week. I mean, it has triggered this wave of violence uh, across all of France, actually, now. It does seem to suggest that there's a bigger problem um, with it amongst young people, um, especially people of colour believing themselves at war with the system. Mm. I mean, you, you can say, well, France has got a history of protest. I'm not sure it's quite got a history of protest like this. This has been going on for some time, and it's perhaps noteworthy that the grandmother of the French teenager who was mm -hmm. shot has appealed to rioters to stop. She says her heart is in pain. Yes, she blames the police officer who killed her grandson, and she's still angry, but she doesn't want these streets and people's livelihoods jeopardised by people who are taking great delight in just going into shops and looting everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that help anybody? It doesn't help the shopkeeper who has to make up for those lost profits. No. But there's clearly a section in the community that doesn't feel invested in the community. They don't feel that their, their France is not their France. It doesn't matter to them. And they have been stimulated by this uh, horrific killing to take action. But, of course, it's unreasonable. And most French people that I've been seeing on television say it's unreasonable. Mm. And now the grandmother of the boy who was killed has said, let's have calm. You know, it's actually the mothers and the grandmothers who use the buses that you're now burning. Yeah, and tragically, a firefighter actually died last night in one of the blazes. But I so think it's, it is calming yeah. down. We do get the impression, you know, last night wasn't as bad as the night before. That wasn't yeah. as bad as the night before that. So hopefully, calm. Do you feel like there is there's a bigger thing going on here, isn't there? That there has to be some big changes. There's a lot of people that want answers to. Well, it's a very multicultural country, and it's got issues like most countries have with, I think, as well, mistrust of the police, and there are different types of police force in France, because it's a little bit like America. So they've got their gendarmerie, then they've got kind of middle-ranking police, and then they've got the state police that aren't particularly popular with minority groups, because they think that they effectively use, use you know, too much force. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's division in a country which has got a great many different people being represented and not happy. But the grandmother here, look, this quote, please don't break the cars. The cars did not do anything to you. The school did not do anything to you. The buses did not do anything to you. Leave us alone. You know, unfortunately, something like this happens, and people who have got no skin in the game apart from just to indulge in wanton violence and destruction get involved, and then you have the mob taking over. Mm. Um, let's move on to our own police force. And I, this story needs some explaining, and I kind of like you guys to thrash it out a little bit here because it's it's one of those classic, almost clickbaity stories. When you, when you see what we're going to show you on the screen, it's up in arms straight away, but actually it does require some explaining mm -hmm. sure. on why this played out. So it's the story about a community support officer who seemingly refused to help a member of the public in West Sussex. That's how it seems to play out on screen. Let's have a look at it and, then, and let's talk, talk us through what happened here. Right. You need to get around to the co-op. Honestly, there's just been a fight round there because people are trying to stop the shoplifters that you're doing nothing about. There's a member of the public just been assaulted by a 15 year old girl who's drunk, had a drink thrown in her face. I know you're not, but the sight of the car will make them scatter. Are you afraid to deal with it then? This is the whole reason these problems exist. That, that's a pretty poor attitude, I'm afraid. You have your opinion on it, Wow. That's disappointing. So, obviously, mm. you first see this and you think, well, this person is clearly not up for helping, and you think, well, it's the police, surely they have to help. The key point to point out here is that this was a police community support officer who don't have powers of arrest, cannot interview or process prisoners, cannot investigate crime, and do not uh, carry out more complex and high-risk tasks that the police officer perform. But Having said that... 
Yes. It's quite hard, isn't it, to watch it but and not... And they you do say have they don't have rights. a power of arrest. They do have a citizen's power of arrest under Section 24 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, which I know you're familiar with, Craig. I am all over it. Um, equally, they can detain for 30 minutes while they wait for a police unit to arrive. Uh -huh. So, although they cannot exercise arrest rights as a fully-fledged police officer can, mm -hmm. they could intervene and they could hold this person while they wait for a response unit. As indeed we could. They have the powers of, of, of every citizen. Yeah. Uh, so until the police come, they could have actually done something. Mm -hmm. I'm not unsympathetic, I must say, uh, in a way. You know, something frightening happening around the corner. But the very fact that they're volunteering to be a support officer, you want support from the support officers. And I rather agreed with the guy who said, actually, show your car there, yeah. and that might frighten them off. Just the, mm. siren, the sirens going might have done enough. Now, the allegations are that it had turned violent, there was punches being thrown, and I got to think, are, are community officers trained to deal with a situation like that well, when but, there's but violence? The community officers, you might see, we, we know from our ITV colleague, Penny Lancaster, she signed up to be a police special police constable. She can go and uh, be along the route of... Uh, major events, for instance, if there's trouble, then they're there as the kind of middle person between citizen and the police. So, also, they're there in uniform, and the effect mm. of uniform mm. is a deterrent, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we, we all slow down in our cars. We want to see more see police the on the beach, and that's an example of it. But also, we want to see more police perhaps intervening when they need yeah. to intervene. Mm. It's also and a really bad exchange. From the yes. community officer's standpoint, it's the optics are not good. Says no, isn't it? It really is. But then yeah. we've all been in situations, haven't we, where we're on buses or trains or whatever, and something is kicking off with a bunch of teenagers. And unfortunately, you turn a blind eye. You know, how many videos have you seen online of, like, just this massive cat fight going on or, frankly, gangs in the street? Are people like us going to intervene no, in this not. day and age? But if you when are... you think someone's going to pull a knife because or something? Scared, but yeah, that, that scared. person has the protection of the uniform and the authority of the uniform and of the car. Mm. So I think we would hope that there would have been some action. I do have an award from the Norfolk Constabulary from catching someone who stole an ambulance many, many years ago. Did you? Ago. Yeah. 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 How did you find you? Um, he crashed in, He stole an ambulance, he crashed into a load of cars outside where my brother was living in Norfolk and we came out and we saw him and he ran away and we chased after him, and then I went, uh-oh, I'm catching him. No. Didn't see this coming, and I just rugby tackled him over to a wall and uh, dealt with things. Were you, were you channeling came. your wrestling I was, yeah, I, was, I, was th I went full Thunder Moon. I thought you were. Is that, is that your name? That's your name. Hang on, Don't I've been called. I've been called. <laughs> That's my wrestling name, Thunder Moon. Do you We've know what come mine up is? One. Yeah. Come We've on. come up with one. The Woolly Mammoth. The oh, Woolly Mammoth. mammoth. Yes, that makes sense. Can I say mine? What's yours? Well, the children call me this when I play football with them. Big Mill. Big, big Mill. mill. Oh, yeah. I like Big that. Mill. Yeah. Let's, I just want to finish on this Hang story. on, Hang you got a wrestling name? <laughs> I don't have a wrestling we name. We need to work on that. Oh, work on that. A hunk of holly. A hunk of holly. Oh, hunk of holly. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, listen, did it, somebody was desperate to go see Taylor Swift the other day, so much so that they didn't go to work, they pulled a sickie. Um, so they went to Cincinnati, this was over the weekend, but just to make sure that nobody would recognise her, she wore a bed sheet and sunglasses over her head, stood in front of the camera for an interview for a local uh, news station, but didn't give up who she was. Here, here they are. So, can you tell me what Taylor Swift means to you? She must mean a lot to you because you're here and you've called in sick. That is very true. I almost named my daughter's middle name Taylor, so... Oh, my goodness. I love it. And we're going to cross our fingers that work doesn't find out, right? No, no, not. We're good. Your secret's safe with me. The sunglasses. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just why? But also, her so voice good. is so recognisable. I know. And her child, his middle name is Taylor. I know. <laughs> I mean, I think and it's you're a massive Taylor well fan. <laughs> you just wouldn't do the interview, would you? I mean, that's the thing. I hope her employer has a good sense oh, of humor. I just um, love things mums will do for their kids. Uh, no, I know. Yeah. She was the fan. She was the fan. There was no truth with her, Craig. There was no truth kids. Kids are not kids. What? She's just skived off work. I'm so gutted we missed. Boil in a bag cremations. Maybe we'll oh. do that another time. Oh, we'll I know Charles that. was we'll really keen to speak another, on that. We'll save mind. that for another time. Um, thank you both. Thank <laughs> you very so much. much. <laughs> thank you. And if you ever need me, just call Thunder Moon, yeah? I will. Help uh, me. Send help. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> St still to come. <laughs>